Welcome to the Conscious Parenting Summit. How to confidently step into parenting from conception through birth and beyond with joy. Learning to really trust the inner guidance of love. I'm your host, Quinn Brown Huffman, Dula Quinn. And the mission of this summit is to support aspiring parents, pregnant parents and those parents lost in the overwhelm of the responsibility. And today, I am really excited because Genevieve Simperingham is joining us all the way from New Zealand. And oh, I, I'm just really excited to talk to her. It feels like when you find someone that speaks the same language and there is just a soul connection. So here's a little bit about Genevieve. She parented her children, who is now 19 and 24, with attachment principles from the beginning and is passionate about teaching peaceful parenting and supporting the self-healing, which makes healthy relationships possible. She's also a psychosynthesis counselor and the founder of the Peaceful Parent Institute in New Zealand. She's a certified parenting educator, a writer, an international speaker, a group facilitator, a meditation teacher, but most importantly, she's a mother. And she's one of nine siblings, and she grew up on a farm in Ireland. Genevieve did experience ongoing physical, psychological, and sexual abuse, which then led her onto a painful but profound personal healing journey and a quest for peace as a teenager. And this path soon revealed her passion to support others who were also seeking to gain more peace and harmony in their lives. The gift of the wound, right? And over the last 25 years, Genevieve has presented hundreds of workshops and courses from evening seminars to five-day residential retreats in parenting, relationships, self-healing, meditation, and personal development. A big, huge welcome to you, Genevieve. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much, Quinn. Thank you for having me, and thank you for all of your beautiful work that you put into making this happen. Thank you for the beautiful offering for parents and parents-to-be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm excited. I think the world is ready and parents are just excited to do things differently. It really feels like there is an opening and we get to just step into the space with some experience and you definitely come with a lot of that. So let me just dive in with the question and, and let's go from there. Why do you specifically think it's important for parents today to become conscious? You know, even what does that conscious mean? I mean, it's such a sort of vast word and people put different connotations to it. But why do you think it's important and how could they begin that journey to that self-awareness? Such a great question, such a big question. And I love how you um, name, what does that even mean? Because uh, the thing about being a conscious self, being a conscious parent, if you were to ask anybody, do how how conscious do you feel you are? You know, everybody believes that they are very conscious because that which we're not conscious of, we're not conscious of, which means we're like, oh, how do I become a more conscious parent? That's uh, and so, so that, but that is that is the journey that we need to we need to go on because. You know, as um, Gabor Mate's um, words come to mind and, and I reflect so many is that it's not what happened to us and what we experienced as much as, as what, how we experienced it and how we perceived it. And so um, what I believe is, you know, there's so much I could say on this, but what I believe is really important, Quinn, in becoming a more conscious parent is having the humility to admit that there's more I need to know, even if I don't know what that is, and committing to that growth, to that personal journey of growth. And, you know, I can go right back, this question can bring, brings me right back to 24 years ago, holding my beautiful boy in my arms. And I had done years of self-healing and personal development, but 
I was overwhelmed with this sense of you spoke to the responsibility, the overwhelm of the responsibilities of parents. And that was really striking me as like, oh my gosh, I am fully responsible for this precious soul's life. And, and I remember promising him that I would do everything I possibly could to, um, to allow him to maintain his peace with himself, you know. And so we need to commit to just doing whatever we need to do to keep creating that space for our children that's a safe and a sacred space, whatever sacred means to you, but that, you know, keeps the heart-to-heart -heart connection alive. And, you know, cliche but true, that does all go back to our childhood. And so reflecting on, even before being a parent, so reflecting on how we were parented, how we felt, what we needed as a child, and, um, you know, and revisiting it with our adult eyes. And mm -hmm. so a lot of parents, and I know Quinn, a lot of the, um, a lot of those listeners will not necessarily even be parents yet, but they're preparing to be parents or planning to be parents. And, um, and, you know, a lot of like your clients, you know, who are preparing for birth. And so whether it's preparing for conception or birth, um, so thinking about, thinking about your journey as a as a child and into adulthood mm -hmm. and how did you really feel and what did you really need because we're not going to expect more for ourselves than we can retrospectively expect from our parents you know so your parents may not may not have been as present as you needed but when we look back and allow ourselves to feel how I needed more, and it's okay, my parents was doing their best, but I needed more. I remember feeling lonely. I remember feeling insecure. I remember going through years of thinking that I, there was something wrong with me, that that conversation could have repaired, and and feeling the grief of that, because when we feel the grief and indeed even the anger, the, the disappointment, the frustration. It just, it's through that pain that we get these huge, powerful insights. And those insights bring us to a place of committing that we don't want our child to have those unmet needs. We want our child to, to experience us to be more available than our parents were for us. So I don't know if that's if that's mm -hmm. it's a huge question, but it it's is. that journey really of self-reflection and that inner journey into mm. how what I really needed. Yeah. Yes. No. Ooh, it is. It's so much, and I think that's that's where I want to speak into that overwhelm also that you said, and how that journey to the self, and really not being afraid of of the pain or the grief or that dark things that we don't, just kind of ignore. But when we become parents, I have found that pattering, the mirroring of our children into our inner child. And so if you haven't looked at your path that you walked as a human being and reflect on it and really, like you said, it grieve, really work through it. It's not just saying, oh, that happened to me and I don't want it to happen to my child. It's also really working with yourself so that that we don't keep projecting our stories on our children and someone said something um actually robin sheldon said something beautiful about um really honoring our children's autonomy so really speaking into that responsibility and i love that because i feel that with my girls when i allowed them their autonomy as humans as souls that come with their own purpose and then you said the yeah. sacred space. How do we hold them also, not just as like we are there, they must do as we say, but bring them into the space as sacred and with purpose and that they already know what they're here to do and we get to go there with them. And then it becomes more of a respect, reciprocal relationship, I feel. And let me tell you, it was a journey for me 
to go from a beautiful pregnancy birth and understanding that and then when my child turned three i had to understand what it meant to become a mother okay so that leads me into this question because and i'll try not to make this a therapy session with you but oh, oh course, i'm sure people appreciate it it was well. yeah you know um because i think speaking also into we can sit with guilt and so not speaking into right or wrongs but going towards what do we want and how do we want to feel in the space of parenting and when we when you speak of um, peaceful parenting um, there's no punishment right and then people go yes, into oh nice. there's no discipline and then there's chaos and everybody goes okay. like insane so over to you because this is your expertise and making people really understand the what that means so that we have yeah. a bit more guilt-free yeah. space yeah. yes yes so important to be naming the guilt because with um parenting education the more we learn about child development and what the child needs then the greater the risk of us descending into guilt and shame hey and and that's just not it's not helpful but it's unavoidable and we need to just keep sitting into it and working through it so you talked about when your girl was three and so i would imagine when your girl was three then it became a little bit harder to to know what does she need and what does she want and what you know you the baby the baby wants to be fed the baby wants to be held it's a little bit simpler mm -hmm. hey yeah. but now your three-year-old is demanding you take them to the park at seven o'clock at night you know <laughs> demanding that you that, that you give them your phone and they can you know play some game or whatever and you don't even want them on a device at that age or you know whatever it is and it's like well but then it all gets a lot more complicated and um, so they're really important questions like what what do these situations look like and um, and you're absolutely right that there is this um there's this i guess confusion that when people hear no punishment that they hear no discipline because it's really Punishment is discipline. It's the same thing. That's how it's always yeah. been in our society, and so so it's an, it's non-punitive. It's not authoritarian, but it's also not permissive because permissive parenting and authoritarian parenting um, are associated with similar negative outcomes, actually. Yeah. Um, and and peaceful parenting is about engaging with the child, and you spoke to you you said something beautiful about inviting them in inviting your child in and that's exactly it it's and so let's use that image of this sacred heart-to-heart -heart space between us and our child so the authoritarian parenting is you know tends to be quite intrusive it's like just do it you just do it because you have to do it and sure you don't like it but i don't like going to work i don't like having to you know spend hours of housework every day, you know, just just do it, that's what needs to be done. And if not, I have the power to make you, you know, regret not doing it and enforcing consequences. And, you know, and it doesn't even have to be harsh punishments so that it can be withdrawing love and withdrawing connection, which is incredibly painful for children. Mm -hmm. So that's the part here in parenting. We know what it looks like. Um, you know, your listeners have got, right, I've stopped that, Genevieve. I know that I know to not do that. Yeah. But, um, but then how do I deal with it when my kids are arguing with each other? Um, and and it's, so it's tempting for parents to go from authoritarian to permissive. And so permissive is kind of, it, it, instead of being intrusive and too tight and controlling it tends to be too loose you know it's like okay okay you know just allowing children to do what they want to do because the parent doesn't want to and can't cope with the conflict like just not today i just can't deal with the battle I'm just just okay have my phone just, okay just eat whatever you want just, okay well we'll go to the park even you know it's easier than having the the battle and um, but so the peaceful parenting is not using the, the punishments um 
because that creates the problem. That creates most of the problems because it creates a breakdown in the connection. And if your child is going to cooperate with you, then they need to feel invited and seen and heard. And I'm thinking of, um, of a, a mom I was talking to a couple of days ago, and she had been saying to me, you know, that every time she went to do the, you know, washing the teeth, putting on the jammies, getting dressed, jammies on, jammies off, in the shower, out of the shower, you know, it was just a battle, a battle every step of the way. And she goes, what do I do, Genevieve? And, and I was in exploring with her ways to make it engaging, how to maintain that lovely warmth of connection, of relationship, yeah. the attachment force, the attachment, that the attachment, uh, it's a, it's a force it's a, that keeps us together, mm -hmm. that keeps us open to each other. And um, I said, how do you make it engaging? And, you know, sing songs. I'm a great believer in sound, music, rhythm, you yes. know, the rhythm of routines and the rhythm of, of, of singing and songs and rhymes. And this why children love nursery rhymes because they are mm -hmm. rhythmical. Yeah. And being rhythmical mm -hmm. is, it, just some amazing things mm -hmm. in balancing the brain. So I'm a great believer in singing and songs and, and having lots of them and and little games and little activities and also whatever, you know, so I was talking this through with her saying, what's she into at the moment and who are the little, you know, the, the, the figures from her, from her play or from some movie she's watched that she's into and it's like, okay, play the house, okay, I'll be Snow White and you'll be one of the dwarfs and who do you want to be or do you want to be Snow White and I'll be a dwarf. Yeah. And, and then, and those same games are just exciting again and again and again. She And she said to me, Jindy, it's just so exhausting. I feel exhausted listening to you. It's yeah. so much work. Yeah. It's just so much work. I just can't do that. It's just, I was just thinking, I and mean, then, and then the next time I spoke to her, she said, okay, well, I went on Google and I Googled some songs for tidy up and songs for teeth washing and songs for, and I got them on my phone and they've been doing these songs and she said, it's amazing. Like just the house has transformed and it's hard work up front, but then it just becomes what you do. And, and it, but it really, the secret is always about connection. Mm -hmm. Always about connection. And even with the limits, you know, they go, oh, well, what about your child or something like really naughty, you know, as it's labeled, um, really bad. What do you do? Your child's being aggressive. Well, you know, I've got one of my e courses is called Meeting Aggression with Connection. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing for parents to really, really get. But if, if you can respond to your child when they're aggressive, in a similar way that you would because they're, you know, throwing a toy or pushing you away um, because they're sick and they've got a fever or because they've hurt themselves or because they've got a broken bone at the moment. And it's, then, you know, those times we naturally find it in us to maintain this amazing empathy and patience because we're going, oh, you sweetheart. You're in so much pain. Of course you're frustrated. Of course this is hard. But really, we need to adopt that same attitude when our child is being really defiant and really aggressive because they're in pain. And actually, um, they're frustrated. They're angry. They're exhausted. And we don't even need to know exactly what the pain is, but we need to get it that if they weren't in some sort of, you know, high stress or emotional pain, they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't have the urge to be aggressive. So they, what they need is for you to go, oh, sweetheart, you were so frustrated. Oh, my gosh, I cannot let you hurt your sister. But let me help you get that frustration out of your body. Oh, sweetheart. Oh. It's so hard. It's so hard being angry, isn't it? Because it is when we think about it, when we're frustrated. Yes. It's so hard. And if somebody's to come onto the scene and just say, you know, 
Queen, don't speak like that to your daughter. That's not okay. You know, you were like, I know it's not okay. <laughs> that's, that's not, it's not ever going to help. Um, but, you know, in short, they need, they need to learn what's okay and what's not okay. They absolutely do need to learn that, you know, all of the um, social do's and don'ts. But mostly it, it lands a lot better when we can say, sweetheart, I know you know that it's not okay to push your little sister when you get upset. And this shows me how frustrated you are. I'm looking after you both. I'm here to help you both. So that, that's the hardest thing to do. But honestly, when a parent can do this, they can. even regardless of what the what the needs and the frustrations, the anger, the trauma that's driving it, this always meets them in the heart, you know? Can I just say, like, you just spoke into something so profound for me that just hit me and it makes it, yes, of course. And I've understood this, but it feels like it now landed because I've been following you for a while. I mean, but now I'm just taking it in. When you said, when our children have physical pain that we can see, I have a broken bone, I have sweat, and then they act out or they sick, fever, we react to them that way. Oh my goodness. If we make that real, then yes. our response, and this is where I always, it's just my favorite thing to say lately is taking a responsibility and breaking it up and saying it's it's going back to our ability to respond and that ability comes to respond. yeah it comes back to us going um because I, i'll share a little bit when when i i'm still working through my guilt as my mama guilt because i had a rough spot genevieve woo, where i really had to figure out what's going on and i yeah. learned so much through that where my my pain that i was triggered with in this space i was lonely i was isolated i was depressed and i did not figure out i couldn't figure out how to be compassionate with my daughter and to really yeah. step into that space so speaking back into that's why the self-care and really understanding our triggers as parents and knowing who we are in the space so that we can step in compassionately and see their pain and like you said it's so beautifully now really respond regardless of what that that is coming from some place like all of us imagine if everyone in the world responded that way to each other and not just kept reacting back and forth but going oh you know this this is why this is so relevant and so important to let it land with us like it just landed with me so profoundly what you said thank you that was a gift today for me that was oh, okay. yeah i mean because there's getting it in your mind and then there's going oh yes ah uh, feeling it we really feeling that yes yes that's oh. that's what i need so that's what she needs yes yeah. oh beautiful thank you okay how about um exploring a little bit more into giving people insight as parents how do they maybe some practical maybe some just like thoughtful ideas how can they honor themselves a little bit more and more practically so that there's more space to honor their children or that they can come into the room present, compassionate, empathetic. But we can only do that if we are self-aware, right? Yes, yes. And yes, it's such an important question. And I think this is what you were just speaking to in that rough patch that you had. We all have rough patches and everybody has rough patches. And uh, I, and I, and I think you you spoke to it you you because because you spoke about your unmet needs you weren't you were struggling to be compassionate to your daughter um, and 
but you were feeling isolated and you were struggling. And so, you know, I, I, um, I heard just the other day that, you know, an airplane, bear with me, going from death, death from its um, departure to its destination is off track 97% of the time, but it just keeps back on track, just adjusting and back on track, adjusting and back on track. And I heard that and it just reminded me of how I say this so often when I'm talking to parents that in all those years where the children were little and where they were younger, um, it's, you know, it's very different now. They're young adults and the relationship is just so easy and so beautiful. And, and when they were younger, it was like off track, back on track, off track, back on track. And so it's not about staying on track. I mean, sure, oh, that would be fantastic. And if you meet anybody who manages to just consistently stay on track and not go off track, please um, introduce them to me because, you know, we need to ask lots of questions to do, you know, um, it's, like, it's a social experiment. But um, back, on, back on track again and again, and you asked about, the you're asking about the parents' needs, aren't you? You're asking about the parents' relationship with themselves, mm -hmm. am I right? Mm -hmm. And how, and I love how so many parents say to me that as they, you know, read the articles or do the e-course or whatever it is, they have this journey of feeling like they've got more permission to meet their own needs and do their own self journey. And that it's not just it's not just something you're allowed to do, but actually, I'm sure you've got this more and more that actually we have to. It's mm -hmm. our responsibility to our child because we all we all bring our trauma to our parenting. I was determined not to bring my trauma to my parenting. I was determined to have it all done, done, and you know, uh, didn't work out like that. No. no. Oh no, it doesn't work like that because there's generations and generations of trauma, you know. So we're parenting our children and we're parenting ourselves, the self-parenting. But your question is so important because it's in that attending to our own needs and our own journey that we keep our hearts soft to ourselves. So we keep our hearts soft to our child. And whenever we harden to our child, and every parent will at times, um, that disconnection comes in, you know, it's because you've lost the connection with yourself, isn't it? I'm sure you've seen that oh, again I felt and again. That. Yeah. It's very it was a very profound difference in my life. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so we, and the, the trauma creates disconnection. It's too to live with it, to come, to cope with it, we have to compartmentalize, mm -hmm. and then we develop those coping mechanisms and those attachment strategies in childhood, and we bring those attachment strategies into our parenting. So it's it's a big journey, and that's why I always say that peaceful parenting is fifty percent self healing and self parenting and self care. Mm -hmm. And then parents say to me, "Jenny, that's impossible." I could do that before I was a parent because I had time. Now I don't have time. Mm -hmm. But it's similar to parents also say to me, or you know, I don't have time to sing songs or make up games or make it fun. I don't have time to come down to their level and talk it through. And I always say, actually, you don't have time not to do those things because when we're not connecting with ourselves and connecting with our child in that way, there's chaos. Because the child can't bear it when they lose access to that genuine heart-to-heart -heart connection and sweetness. They can't bear it. Yeah. And that's not just your girls and my kids. That's everybody's kids. They can't bear it. So we have to just keep it really, really real. real. And yeah. when we do it... When we do it well enough, our kids help us keep it real. They do. They help us keep it real. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. And my, my daughter just last night, she was reminding me, she's 19 and she moved out and now she's back home and she's going through a very, very, very deep, deep, deep journey. And, you know, and it's like a healing retreat here at the moment in the evenings where mm. meditators 
on the couches here for two hours last night and watching all these, you know, Gaia documentaries on health, healing and consciousness. And um, she's on a big, big, deep healing journey. And she was saying how she, you know, she's going through the grieving of being in a state school as a dyslexic kid. She's got, she got a lot around that, you know, and um, but she remembers when I would be, you know, like being really kind of all business, you know, just all business, getting things done, getting ready for bed, whatever. And um, it's basically like stress. And she remembers she would say, Mom, you can just cry. Mom, you need to cry. She put her arms around me. <laughs> and I thought, I always would. I would just break down on the spot and you'd cry. And I had this, and what always struck me is, I wasn't noticing I needed to cry, you know. I was aware, probably aware that I was stressed and I needed to put on her pajamas and you know, I needed things to move along. I wasn't thinking I need to cry. And she was talking to me about this last night, sitting here, and she was saying, isn't it beautiful that I already at that age, she remembers this, recognize that this person is stressed and disconnected they need to come back to the flow of emotions because that's what I was giving her, you know, that yeah. she would be, no, I don't want to do that. And I would say, oh, sweetheart, just go upstairs, just let it out, honey, what do you need? And she would have a cry. And then she would yeah. give me the same, you know. And oh. now at 19, she's saying, what a gift this has been. And she was saying to her brother, you know, when dad rang me and told me that you'd broken your arm when you went down the skateboard lately, I was walking down the main street in, one, you know, Wellington, one of our cities here in New Zealand. And she said, and I just was crying so much. I'm so sad for you. And there was no place to sit. And I was on the main street. But I thought, I don't care that people see me crying. I was just so sad for you. Mm. And so, you know, so beautiful that we can, when we can, keep our relationship with ourselves alive and connected and keep coming back. We will disconnect, but we oh, keep coming back. Yeah. Then we help them to keep coming back. Oh, I got goosebumps like all over my body. Oh, I always say that's when, when truth is spoken, my body go, gets goosebumps. That's, you know, I, I'm feeling that same connection growing as my girls are are uh, finding more words and more experience to speak from themselves. It is delicious what the conversation and the journey of every day, because yes, I go to work or I have things going on and my stress levels go up and she'll yes. just go, mom, you need to just put your phone down and, and come cuddle me or, you know, they'll speak into what, you exactly what you're saying and it is absolutely delicious when we allow ourselves that connection and one of my realizations because you said um you know people say and you also say before you were a parent you're like i was going to be done with all of that i was going to be you know the peaceful parent in the home and i yeah we all would love that but we only know who we are in relationship with others like even when we get married who we find ourselves to be changes because suddenly you are, have an intimate witness there consistently. And then with our children, we are their intimate witnesses from the first day of their lives and ongoing. And that gets really, it gets intense. And to really realize that, that but that's also the gift. That's, we get to know ourselves on such a deep level in relationship. It's really, really profound. I feel like we could talk for hours and hours, Genevieve. It's so good. I want to hear if you could give a newborn a welcome gift and you could package it in words. What would you say? Oh, a newborn in words. Oh, um, my own, new, my own baby or... or a ba um, yeah, a baby in that's born into the world today, a newborn baby, any newborn baby. Yeah, okay. So I want to say to that, to that incoming soul, to that newborn baby, that you deserve to be loved unconditionally and to be cared for and to be protected 
with every every cell of my being and your mom and your dad and those around you you deserve to be cared for and to be protected and to be seen for the individual being that you are and that for your gift to be welcomed thank you for coming to earth you are so brave you are so brave to be here and you are blessed and you are loved and you are protected and thank you for the beautiful gift that you bring your presence is such a gift and you deserve to be cared for loved and protected ah, that was beautiful <laughs> i hope they all hear you <clears throat> wow okay Please will you share what you're offering in free gift so that everyone listening to this today can just click on and join you in your work. What? Please share that with us. So I'd like to offer some of my audios. I want to offer the, the four tracks of my Stress Relief for Parents CD, which I produced a very long time ago, but it continues to be very relevant. And one of those tracks is it, it's about this journey of when you become a parent, all that gets triggered in you at each step of the journey. Like when your child is, when your child's in utero, what gets triggered is your body conscious memories of when you were in utero. When your baby is one, your body is being activated to resolve whatever needs resolving from when you were that age. And so it just talks that through. And there's a beautiful track called Bliss, which is a, um, it's a full body relaxation. So it's just like 15 minutes or something to take the parents through totally decompressing and becoming aware of the sensations, becoming aware of the stress and releasing it from every single part of the body, a little bit like a yoga nidra. Um, and one of the tracks is for when there's an issue with your child that consistently triggers you, that hardens you, that stresses you, that gets you reactive or confused or overwhelmed or guilty. And it, it takes you through, in that I take you through a process of going into the body sensations and the somatic feelings and I just identifying at meeting some of those needs and then relating to your child because our children tend to have similar feelings as we do in those places of power struggle. And there's one other track, track in it which is for when you're in the stress response and you're having extreme feelings and extreme thoughts and you feel utterly overwhelmed and it's me talking you through like your client sitting in the room with me, I just talk you out of the stress response and back out of the paras out of the sympathetic response back to the parasympathetic nervous system response. And then and so they're really powerful tracks and there's another one that I'm adding called bedtime struggle, which is around supporting your child's kind of healthy transition into sleep which is also dealing with separation, which is the biggest challenge for children. So I talk through what's going on psychologically in that um, nighttime, that transition to sleep, and how to meet your child and your own needs during that time. That is a profound oh. gift. We are so lucky to have you. Genevieve, I'm sincere. That is amazing. I can't wait. I, I've so appreciated all your offerings that come through just on your newsletter and in in the spaces that i've occupied with you and but being in conversation with you and hearing your voice in it it carries a whole other resonance and the gift of that is so big thank you thank you thank you i appreciate you you are so welcome. Thank you for having me on and for being part of this. Thank you. I feel so honored. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you to all of you for joining us today at the Conscious Parenting Summit. May you feel supported and know that you're not supposed to do this 